This is a tutorial for students in Geosciences 472 A and B in the Department of Geosciences at Penn State University on how to make a geologic map using the Esri product ArcMap. It's a tutorial, it's a primer, it's the least amount of information one needs to do this. I'm assuming that your instructor has created a geolog or a coverage, a GIS coverage that looks like this in which there's a, maybe an orthophoto, a, uh, say a DRG, maybe the uh, digital raster graphic that goes on top of that. But in particular has created some geologic arcs and polylines that represent contacts and normal faults, thrust faults, for which you know the codes and geologic units already as you see here. Furthermore, I'm going to assume that you have a field copy uh, that's already your geologic map that what you're doing is transcribing and making your final copy. I'm not assuming that you're going to do your geology right off this photo although certainly you can zoom in and look at detail here, look at coloration that you can't see in the field that should supplement what you have in your field map. Now I already have put a contact in here, it's this line that you see right here that separates out this bedrock, undifferentiated bedrock from all of the alluvial fill. The general approach to making a geologic map is to draw your contacts, draw your faults in, and those in uh, combination with this polyline, this black line that outlines the field area will, if they're all snapped together, create interior spaces like this space right here which can be converted into a polygon using the topology tool up here. Now you need to make sure that under tools and extensions that you have the appropriate extensions turned on and under views tools that you have your editor toolbar so that you have most of the toolbars that you see uh, right up here. So let's begin. We, I'm going to zoom in one here. Um, no, I'm not, because I, I actually want these in. Now you can zoom in and out while you're editing, but uh, for the uh, purposes of this exercise, I'm going to leave it at this level. Hit editor, start editing, and make sure you pick the right coverage. We want to edit our geologic units, our geologic arcs, and our map boundary, so that's good. I hit OK. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the next thing you want to do is make sure that snapping is turned on for the map boundary, the geologic units, and geologic arc, that there are checks in all of these areas, and furthermore, that the under general, options general, that the snapping tolerance is map units, and I'm going to pick 100 meters here because the map units here are meters. That's pretty uh, coarse. Once you get better at this, you can reduce that snapping tolerance. I'll define what that means in a minute, the snapping tolerance. Hit OK, and you can iconify this. All right. Your field map says that this is a fault that runs right down through here and it's uplifted this segment right is a an older alluvial fan surface and so we're going to put that fault in right now. We go to um, create new feature geologic arc is the target because it, we want to put a fault in which is right in uh, here and it's a normal fault we know that the upthrown block is on the east side here grab the pencil and we start clicking right in here along this. Now the fault is well exposed up to here but now it's obscured by this modern alluvium so I double clicked at the end of this to make a polyline segment. Now that doesn't have any attributes, any line width or anything to it yet. I want it to be this symbol and you know from your PDF that that symbol is uh, the code 1. So go up to Geology Arc, right click, open your attribute table, and put in here under Polyline 
double click and put code one and return and that tags that as a normal fault. Save your edits because ArcMap is prone to crash. These are the polylines from this other line segment up here. Okay and now we continue on. We're still in editing mode create new feature in other geology arc and we want to do this concealed segment across here I'm going to uh, zoom in a couple of clicks here so I can see that a little better and notice how when I move my cursor over the the ball jumps at some distance away to the end end of the segment well that's a hundred meters that's what that snapping tolerance means a hundred meters so I double click there and I click across here and then I double click here and that is the segment that we're going to tag down here in our attributes table as concealed and you all know from your your code uh, correspondence table that that's a code of three. Continuing on but I want to be able to see down here and so I'm going to use the hand and move up here so I get the end of the of the fault segment. Um, where's my pencil? There's my pencil. I come up and uh, it's very important to see that jump up there because that's how you know that you're really snapping and there's no holes or gaps between these lines. And click and click and click. This could be two fault segments but I'm going to make it as one for this exercise and double click down here at the end of that and that again is a well exposed fault. Oh I'm putting in the wrong numbers here actually these are contact numbers concealed but I want faults and so this should be four if I remember my codes right and this one should be six. There you see now we, we see the the fault in there that's the right symbol again make sure you save and I'm gonna use the world to zoom back out and click off the map and there is my fault and if I zoom in here you can see that the segment that's in the creek channel is dotted as it should be to symbolize that it's a concealed fault in there someplace or an inferred fault Okay, that's perfect. And remember, the um, this is the upthrown side block, and we've got the ticks on the right side. If we wanted them on the other side, we would have started at the south side and gone north, and that would reverse the polarity of the ticks. All right, we want to now um, outline this fan as another unit that we want to call something uh, different as a geological unit and so we continue on here with our editing we're still in edit mode create new feature geology art grab the pencil again come over here and at the tip of this someplace in here we will click along the edge of this fan and come up through here and get up to there. That's a contact. We'll say that's a pretty well-defined contact and we'll do the same that's down here. Now of course this looks somewhat arbitrary in here and it is arbitrary. I'm just going by the color. This is really not anything you should be doing without being in the field and looking at these deposits and we'll call that one. All right, save our edits and stop editing. All right, let's say that that's the end of all your contacts and faults and you're ready to make your polygons that will define the different geologic units. We should have one polygon here because that's an enclosed area. This is an enclosed area out to the edge of the map and then all of this is an enclosed area that comes up into here and over into here and so if we've properly snapped these lines 
And if this bounding box is properly wrapped and closed, these, in other words, these really are truly polygons defined by these polylines, then when the topology tool operates on these polylines, we will get one, two, three polygons. So we'll see how that goes. 